Welcome to the Great Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. I am your host, Brandon Daniel. I'm your co-host, Sybilla Muti. And we have with us, drum roll, so drum roll, drum roll. <laughs> Jennifer Rudolph Bush. Yay. Yay. She's back, everyone. She's Yay. back. Oh, oh my, my gosh. We ran into her office like, hi, oh, Guys, we had a whole podcast before you guys yeah. got on. We were in a puppy pile within about two seconds. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh so happy to be back with this amazing group. Oh, and my favorite great girlfriend. We're so Thank happy you. to be back. Mm-hmm. We, we should miss just, you madly, Jennifer. Jennifer, you should just put us a little, little two little desk. Anytime. <laughs> anytime. Two most glamorous, gorgeous, amazing, badass ladies. Oh, oh thanks, Jennifer. I'm How so good. Oh, I've been so good. Uh I've been amazing. Since Uh the last time we met, so many extraordinary things have happened. Uh First of all, I turned 50 on Valentine's Day. Yes. And I have to say, my grandfather always told me that the 50s are the decade of great reward for those Mm. who did the work in the 30s and the 40s. Oh. And boy, has that been true so far. I mean, it's Mm. only been about six or seven months, but every day, something more amazing, some... A, a profound coincidence, something comes mm, full circle. Yeah. And so it's been unbelievably extraordinary. And and I also took a lifetime trip to Africa, yes. which was wonderful because I was able to take my mother mm-hmm. and oh, my wow. husband and my children. My daughter was graduating from college. Oh, and so and my birthday, we called it a milestone trip. I and love it. And it was really, it was transformational. So wow. I've been walking on cloud nine and then I came back right in time for us to launch our new tour, our, our new season of the Together Tour. Yes, wow. yes. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you. I, I know. know. That's one of your, most, um, your, your babies and one of your passion projects for sure. Well, there's nothing like being there. Yeah. And I absolutely adore uh, the work I do all year round in helping people tell their stories in books mm-hmm. and in lectures. But there is just something mm-hmm. so magical when people come together mm-hmm. and actually tell their stories together. And so last year, thanks to you ladies and this amazing group, we saw 15,000 people. Wow. Love it. Crazy. Yes. Congratulations. In six yes. cities. Wow. Um, and this year, we, you know, go big or go home. Mm-hmm. We're doing wow. 10 cities, and we hope to see 35,000 people. Oh, absolutely wow. done. I know it's <laughs> happening. I know it is. We well, went to the, um, last year, Sybil and I went to the Brooklyn stop. Oh, that's and right. And when I tell you... And like butterflies, it, everything about it was absolutely incredible. The entire experience. Thank you. And we saw great girlfriends there. Yeah, which was <laughs> so really you cool. Guys came like, out. Yeah. We saw you. Yes. Thank you. It was awesome. Every speaker was perfectly positioned. The messages were so clear. The intention was clear. The heartbeat behind it, which you know is your brain and everything that you have going for it, just was so evident. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Well, we really. Actually, myself and our co-founder, Glennon Doyle, we have this collective dream to Mm. create a completely intergenerational, intersectional gathering of people just telling their most heartfelt stories, using the breadcrumb of their life to point them to purpose. Mm -hmm. And once you find out what your unique Mm -hmm. purpose is, Mm -hmm. you connect to a community that supports you in getting over the bridge of bravery into action. And... Watching people come alive wake, and wake themselves up yes. mm-hmm. and realize yes. that purpose is not just a thing for other people. Yes. yes. It's for, oh it's my for everybody. everybody. We <laughs> talk about that all the time. So people will say, like, they'll say, oh, it's for you. Like, yeah. You yeah. guys are doing it's so easy for you. It's only, you're you're doing so it's only for special you're people. So it's only, and they were like, no, it's not every, just I know. us. It's I know. every single it's person. And yes. it doesn't have an age limit. And yeah. The other, yeah, the other thing that I, I, I love is that time that you've quote unquote wasted trying to find your purpose is not actually wasted time. No. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. not a straight line. Yeah. And so good. it's just a beautiful thing. Here I, she I never, goes. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a straight line. But it really isn't. It's not. It's and, not. and people want it to be. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember at one of our events, we had a group of 77-year-old women that all come together, and we had a tower in the in the, in the the lobby where you could put your dream. Mm-hmm. And those women were first online there trying to put wow. their dream on there. And I remember just saying to myself, remember that 
Everybody has a dream. Even somebody who's in their late Mm -hmm. 70s, if you have breath, Mm -hmm. you still have the potential to reach a dream and to reach your purpose. And that's really what I want the Together Tour to highlight for those that are doing it Mm -hmm. and to shine a light for those who want to do it but haven't quite gotten there yet. Yeah. I feel like that happened last year for sure. Thank you. I can say say that you could feel the ignitions just starting to rev. It like was in so the room. We left out of people. Didn't want to leave. No, oh, yeah, no. Want to leave. no, it's so true. Every one of our events turns into an after party. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Mommy, people, I they know. literally they don't put leave. us out. I know. Like, <laughs> they put you out <laughs> like the trash. <laughs> we, we, I know. I know. <laughs> Every <laughs> single <laughs> place they was like literally that. put us out. Yeah. I know. Well, that's why we created this app, which is at Together Live. It's free for everybody. You don't even have to come to our to our show to, mm-hmm. to do it. But every day we give original content. We profile people who are living their purpose, getting into action. You can create your own yeah. Together Circles. I love so that it. that's our commitment to come yeah. together, to stay together, to grow together. Mm. So, but that's so cool. You have this resource, this Together app that you said is free, which is even more exciting because I don't have to pay money to get all of this right. wisdom yeah. that you guys pour in and year round. Totally. It's available to people who want to, to be in the tribe. Totally. Even to if, you, had, even if you, you didn't attend, it doesn't yeah. matter to us. Just come. We, we need everybody. Yeah. Everybody's welcome and everybody is needed. Yeah. Oh, that's so I good. I love that. And me I and Sybil just got a sneak peek at this app. <laughs> I know. I was like, okay, go <laughs> to self. This is going to be on my ride. On my commute home, uh, I'm going to be diving yeah, into the perfect. content. Perfect. Well, I I mean, there are many many ways to download it yeah. on, on at the iStore, but going to our website, which is at together, www.togetherlive.com, is the easiest way that I know how because it's okay. all there. Okay, okay So please do, and then you see all the dates for our new tour. Yes. I love it. Ten oh, cities. I Yay. It. Coming to I a city near it. you. So we're in this series right now, Jennifer, where we're talking about pivoting. Right. Mm-hmm. And so Sybil and I, we told you guys this before, but Sybil and I are sitting in Jennifer's office and there are like all of these amazing books by, you know, these incredible authors, yeah. just to name a few, Sheryl Sandberg, Lean In, Cameron Diaz, um, Ariana Huffington Thrive, Oprah's book is here. Um, I, I mean, honestly, right? Mm, this is beautiful. like the best of the best and the top of the top. And if you guys did not hear Jennifer's um, first episode, you have to go. We'll put her uh, link to her first episode in the show notes because you have to listen Thank to you. Uh, her story, which was so super inspiring from Thank starting you. basically something from scratch. Right. Well, I mean, and, storytelling has been the sort of the, the thread through the labyrinth of my life, you know, mm-hmm. from the time that I was very young. Mm-hmm. I've just been very... Just I come alive when someone mm-hmm. tells a story. And it doesn't need to be a quote-unquote true story for it to be true. In mm-hmm. other words, mm-hmm. a novel, which is fiction, mm-hmm. can have the exact same impact as a, as a nonfiction as long as it's coming from a true heart-centered mm-hmm. space. And so, you know, it started with soap operas, really, but it grew very quickly to movies and television and books mm-hmm. where I just felt like when I would hear somebody else's story, I would just... I would come alive, and mm-hmm. it wasn't good enough to just hear the story. I wanted to share it, mm-hmm. and so you know, That's it's like so just better when you share yeah. it. You know, uh-huh. you ever hear a story and you just can't wait to call, yeah. you, call yeah. each other and just say, "You're not going to believe yes. this." Yes. Yeah. 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 So that has really been like the you know the sort of the the, the jetpack engine of my life, mm-hmm. and. Um, I'm not a writer. I, I, I've said before, and I'll say again, I'm not a thought leader, but I am a great thought follower. And I love that about myself. Oh, you know, I really, I, I, know how to fo- I know how to follow a true thought. Mm-hmm. And, and then I know how to share it to as far and wide a group as possible. Mm-hmm. And um, listen, you know, there's great importance to the first follower. Not everybody has to be the leader. <laughs> 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 I love that being so, a thought follower. That's what I am, and I'm proud of that. Yeah. And so... You know, the, the the 20 years of my career was really about creating opportunities for these incredible thought leaders mm-hmm. and authors to come to the biggest mountain with the biggest megaphone that I could possibly help build and mm-hmm. provide for them. And then as time kind of went forth, I just started to miss the idea of just actually physically being together. I think it's probably the downside maybe of the whole Mm. digital age where, Mm -hmm. you know, my daughter who's 22 and amazing will say, oh, I talked to that person. And I say, oh, what did they say? She says, here, let me show you. (laughs) So she says talk, but she doesn't mean talk. She means text. And it literally doesn't mean the same thing to her as it means to us. And I think that there's so many amazing things about the social world that we live in. But 
what doesn't totally get replaced is the feeling that you three of us yes, are having right now. We're all touch. sitting here holding yeah. hands and, our, uh -huh. and we're shaking our heads yeah. up and down yeah. and in recognition. You don't get that same thing. And you don't get that. Mm -hmm. And you know, books are generally written alone in a room by the author, and they're read alone in the room by a yeah. reader. And so it's an amazing experience, but it's a solitary experience. Mm -hmm. And I love that. In fact, books have followed me at the hospital bedside of people I love. They have mm -hmm. followed me when I've been alone in a bathroom just thinking nothing is ever going to get better for me in my life. They have followed <laughs> yeah. me, and they have accompanied me at, yeah. the, at the highest and lowest places of my life. But there's nothing quite like being there. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning of your career, when someone would pitch you a book or when you knew you had a new project, would they come into your office? Yeah. What was the what was that? Well, I mean, I've been like? so a lot of it is a lot of it is is just reading on the page. But one of the great blessings of my life is been able to have these close, intimate conversations with the authors mm -hmm. about their lives. Like Jeanette Walls is a perfect example because her book the Glass Castle was just turned mm -hmm. into a movie and was released this weekend. Mm -hmm. But I'll never forget when Jeanette Walls delivered that first proposal to me. Mm -hmm. I had known her for 10 years. I had done two books with her. Mm -hmm. I didn't know she was homeless her whole life, that she'd moved wow. 27 times. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's just the most polished, put-together person. Yeah. And so when I read that proposal for the first time, and then I asked her to come into my office, and we just I just cried and hugged her. And I just felt like I'd never really knew. I'd never really knew. Mm -hmm. And from that point the depth of the relationship just got so much deeper. Mm -hmm. And that is the that is the great blessing of my professional life. I mean, obviously, it goes mm -hmm. well beyond the professional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when Brene Brown, you know, writes a, a, a manuscript and inside the manuscript is a, a personal anecdote, you know, about a ham sandwich and her husband, and it's so amazing, and then I'm crying and I'm laughing and I'm finding myself and my husband in the story, mm -hmm. um, you know, the honor for me is that I'm actually in the circle of people that get to read that from the actual author. Yeah. And that is just the sacred, sacred responsibility that I take so seriously. I mm. love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's amazing. But it just wow. seemed like a natural evolution then to want to actually go from reading mm -hmm. to standing in a room full of people sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know even you doing the Together Tour was a pivot for you because when we came in here last year and had the conversation, you said, I'm not comfortable in front of people. Yeah. 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 Remember that uh -huh. Uh -huh. I was she was like, I, I was am begging out. I was begging somebody else to be the MC, the host or whatever, because I have absolutely no interest in being in front of the stage, in front of the whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of my favorite things I used to say, I'm the best kept secret. And I just mm -hmm. loved that. I just absolutely I loved love that. These descriptors. These are that. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I loved that. I mean, I always you know, my sort of my my dream for leadership is always when you leave, the townspeople will believe they saved themselves. Mm. So that was always like my that was sort of like my prayer. Mm. Jennifer, I know she always. <laughs> so when you didn't tell the great girlfriends, pen and paper. Out. You have to have your pen and paper. You have to because I'm telling you, every single time, like you Thank just have you. this way. Your words are so intentional. Thank you. And, and sincere and true. And when you say, I'm like, that is fantastic. Well, that was my that that is my servant's heart, and that yeah. is truly that is truly my prayer. Mm -hmm. But um, when we were going to hit the road and we needed somebody to stand on the stage and introduce people and do all that mm -hmm. stuff, I just thought, well, it's silly to pay someone to do that when I'm just going to be there the whole time anyway. Yeah, yeah. And so I sort of reluctantly um, thought, well, let me do it a few times. And mm -hmm. if it feels OK, then I'll keep going. Mm -hmm. And what I quickly discovered while I was up there, um, besides like, Things like, oh, you actually have to check your food, your teeth for food before you get on the stage, <laughs> especially when there's a giant screen behind you. <laughs> I mean, I had so many crazy things because I'm so a behind oh the scenes person. I mean, uh -huh. our second stop was L.A. Oh, so uh, we get to L.A. about an hour before I have to leave for the for the uh, the, the, stu the event. I go, wow, oh, I wonder if I should have gotten hair and makeup. Like, I'm in L.A. I'm in L.A. All my colleagues are going to be there. It's literally an hour before. I download an app that has like, you can just get like a local hair and makeup person uh -huh. to come to your house. <laughs> this woman comes in, smoking a cigarette practically. She's about, she's about 60 years old from Miami, bleach blonde hair up to here. I knew I was in trouble. What she did to me, I mean, I look like a poodle with a painted face on. 
I literally, after she left, I had to jump into the shower as fast as I can, tie my hair up in a soaking wet knot, and run to the and run to the and run to the theater. L. A. Oh, hilarious. Yeah. So I, I actually had to I, I had I had to learn to stop and consider my myself in these situations because yes. I'm so used to worrying about you know, how, the, how the author is going to look and yeah. what the author right. needs. So right. that's been kind of funny. But what I have learned, I know you got to find some footage of that one. <laughs> What I have learned is that um, I, I am the stand-in for the audience, yeah. and I ask the questions that the audience wants to yeah. know, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm holding the space for both their questions and also for their greatest hopes and their heartbreak. Yeah, and you know I'm just I'm myself up there. Yes, yeah, you yes. were so perfect. You were so. Yes. And when you were up there in Brooklyn, we were like, "What is she talking about?" Right. <laughs> She on it. her. You were so perfect. We were like, why because would she you, dare you, be afraid? Because you amazing. brought the human to it, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. so good. Depending on who the host is or who the MC is, it can feel very structured, very yeah. programmy, yeah. very, you know, stiff. It felt like home. It's yeah. funny, it felt That's like exactly home. what I wanted it, it to be. Mm-hmm. We want, Glennon and I both wanted it to be like the best dinner party you ever had where you never actually make it to the living room because everyone stays <laughs> in the kitchen the whole yes. time. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah. yeah. That's what we wanted it to feel like. And that's why we have all the speakers stay on the stage uh-huh. and on the couches. Yeah. So even when someone's giving a keynote, uh-huh. you can see everybody listening and yeah. talking and mm-hmm. You know, like it, we're kind of spontaneous and interruptive and and yeah. affectionate, just like we are in real life, just, yeah. like, just like us ladies are in real life. Yeah. yeah. And it was also it's also very important for me that nobody tells you how to live, tells you what to do, because we don't know. We're yeah. not God. Yeah. We we're had not that God. conversation before yeah. before the podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm figuring it yeah. out. As Glennon Doyle, yeah. my co-founder says, we're just sitting around practicing not being God together, right? Mm-hmm. So all I can do. When you tell me something that's happening for you is I can listen deeply. I can ask questions that come to my mm-hmm. mind and then maybe share a story for my, about myself where I had been in somewhat of a similar situation. And yeah. if there's something to be learned, great. You know, and yeah. if not, we've just moved closer because we shared some stories. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's very important that people come to together knowing that you are the expert on you. You know, mm-hmm. you, you just, you just need help in uncovering mm-hmm. maybe or honing your purpose and mm-hmm. getting the right kind of positive energy around you so that you can mm-hmm. manifest all your dreams. Mm-hmm. So how do you, I mean, because your life is full, right. full, you know, how do you make space for those that are listening who have a full life and they have other passions and somehow you were able to make room for this passion to have its growth in your life, meaning you introduced it's all about priorities. It's all about priorities. And mm-hmm. I think you said the best word because people say to me, are you so busy? And I'm not busy. I'm full. Mm-hmm. And you, that's the perfect word. I'm mm-hmm. full. I'm satiated. I'm nurtured. Mm-hmm. But I'm not busy. I have time to do the things that I prioritize. Mm-hmm. So I think that when people say busy, 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 that gives the impression that you're not in control of your own, mm-hmm. of your own time. Mm-hmm. I mean... You know, Barack Obama had 24 hours a day. Look what he managed to do. You know, yeah, it's like we all have 24 hours in a yeah, day. Yeah, And so I just think that uh, the reason that Together is is such a vibrant part of my life is because it gives me energy. It doesn't take energy mm-hmm. from oh, me. Good. yeah. So when I'm, you know, finding an author or a speaker to come on the road with us, obviously we have Glennon Doyle, Abby Wambach, the great two-time gold medalist, but also the the love of Glennon Doyle's life and the love of all of our lives. We have Lovey Ajayi mm-hmm. and Latham Thomas coming to almost all of our events. And then we have special guests along the way. When I find someone new who's coming to one of our events, I get so excited. I'm calling, I'm listening to their story, mm-hmm. you know, and, and so everything else that day gets deprioritized. Mm-hmm. And then the next day the priorities change and I'll, mm-hmm. and I'll focus first on what I didn't get to yesterday. Yeah, that's good. That is good. Because I think I think sometimes we get so caught up in, like you said, being busy and making that an excuse for why our stories can't manifest. Right, you know, that's too exactly busy right. to do this. Therefore, this has to put, everything has to be put on hold. And then we find ourselves collecting years and it's like at the end of those years, what's there? Right, and also you're carrying around like dead weight. I have a mm-hmm. silly story about this. Mm-hmm. But when I turned 40, I decided I was going to play tennis. I never played tennis as a mm-hmm. child. I had no experience with tennis. I bought the outfits first, obviously. Yes. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I bought the outfits. You have to have the outfits. Of course, the skirts. I always wanted to wear those skirts. Uh-huh. And I got myself a perfect racket, and I signed up for these classes. Mm-hmm. 
and I hit it hard. Mm -hmm. And it was hard. And I found myself promising myself that I would practice during the week and then I wouldn't practice and then I would get to my class on the weekends and I would just be making a lot of excuses for why I wasn't doing the things I was supposed to practice with. And then I found myself one time buying a five pack and then not using them and then being really mad at myself about that. <laughs> and so suddenly this thing that I was supposed to be doing for myself was becoming this, this cycle of guilt and things I, you know, that I was wasting. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it hit me. I must really not want to play tennis or else I'd be prioritizing it. <laughs> and I know that sounds so silly, but I just thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to put a period and an end on that sentence. I'm not playing tennis now. Yeah. So I can stop walking around saying to myself, you're not, you're not doing the things you said you were going to do. You're not practicing. Right. You're not holding your end of the right. bargain. Right. Just this self-talk yes. and just That's making true. yourself feel yes. bad. Yes. Obviously, if I wanted to play tennis, I could be playing. <laughs> That's how I figured out that I guess I really didn't want to play you that really bad. You really just wanted the outfit. I did. <laughs> and you got the outfit. And you got the outfit. So you did it. You did yeah. it. Because the truth is, like, you know, when I, for example, when I first uh, start, watched the first episode of Handmaid Tale, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. If you guys uh -huh. haven't seen it, you have to. No. It's phenomenal. Okay. I said, oh, no, it's 10 episodes. Where am I going to find time? You better know I've found time. <laughs> <laughs> Within that week, I got all 10 of those episodes done because I was eating them two at a time. Surprise. But if so you much. had said to me, do you have 10 hours this week to oh, do something? Yeah. yeah. No way. <laughs> that is so true. That's hilarious. <laughs> but you prioritize. You locate it. it. You, know, you locate it. You locate it. You know? <laughs> Just like I could locate time to go for an ice cream sundae. Like, right. right. Pretty much any time. <laughs> or a glass of wine. Pretty much any time. <laughs> Anytime. That is so funny. I think what you what you said is so true. When you have an achiever's mindset, it's about meeting the goal. It's yeah. like if I put that goal in front of me, I gotta conquer it, I totally. gotta crush it. Totally. But what about the revelation that it was about the outfit? Yeah. Or that <laughs> really, I just had the, you just gave that to me. <laughs> <laughs> the outfit, you got the outfit. Okay, you and you wore it. Totally. Yeah. And you played tennis in it. Perfect. And it's, right. And it's, and it's done. done. Right, yeah. but that's the other thing too, is that I think we're all type A and you just think you never give up on anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the truth is all things are not equal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so You don't great. give up on people. Yeah. You, know? you don't give up on yeah. dreams. Yeah. You don't give up on purpose. Yeah. But you can give up on tennis. Yeah. yeah. You know, you yeah. can give up on scrapbooking or journaling or, <laughs> right. you know, right. Right. baking so or whatever else you've decided is going to be your hobby. Yeah. Right. When you're, you know, white knuckling it through the day as it is. <laughs> <laughs> so true. We have so many of our great girlfriends who are trying to figure out their purpose. Yeah. And we talked about this, I think, on the first episode. Right. And I know that that's something that you guys, that we, you walked through with the Together Tour. Yeah. Right. Like, can you give us, like, first step? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, for one thing, there are some questions you can ask yourself that help you sift through the, the life story, your own life story, and start looking at some of what I call breadcrumbs that point to purpose. You know, think of them as literally like stepping stones. Mm -hmm. And we do this at the event, so hopefully some of your listeners will be able to join us on the road, and we'll actually, you'll walk away with a purpose statement at the end. But some of the questions you might ask yourself is, um, when you were little, what was the thing that you did that made time fly? Like, you know, all of a sudden your mom's like, where's Jennifer? She's, you know, late for dinner. What was it that you were doing when, mm -hmm. when, when that happened? So good. Mm -hmm. And, and another thing is, what do your friends always come to you for? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you start writing down some of these answers, mm -hmm. you know, um, what did, what, what, what did somebody, um, once tell you that you were exceptional at that you just thought was ordinary about yourself mm -hmm. and how did it make you feel? So these are all little ways that you can start looking at. So for me, for example, what was I doing when time was flying? I was hearing all about my friends' stories and their parents' stories. And then I was giving them my thoughts on their stories. And mm -hmm. then I was repeating their stories to other people. And, you know, uh, so there's a breadcrumb, right? Yeah. Um, and what was the first time that someone said that I was good at something that I thought was just ordinary? It was a teacher who said to me once, oh, no, no, you can't talk to talk your way out of this. I know you're famous for being able to talk anybody into doing anything, and that's not going to work for me. And all I heard was, wait, I'm what? <laughs> Say it one more time. <laughs> I'm famous for being able to talk anybody into anything? I mean, yes. like, I felt like literally like he'd taken a fairy godmother what wand and hit me in the head. You know, because that I didn't oh, know that. Yeah. You know, I didn't know that. Wow. And that was your reputation. Yeah. And I, yeah. And it was actually a bad reputation, but I just... She was trying to resist you, but she couldn't She's like, you're not tricking me this time. But every other time you tricked yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. And all the other teachers, too. Yeah. 
So, wow. So these are the ways that I started to realize that um, these are my breadcrumbs, right? Mm-hmm. And, and then I would say to myself, another question that we ask at the event is, what breaks your heart? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. inside that, so for me, the answer is what breaks my heart is when people feel powerless or invisible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. not surprised. Yeah. Yeah. So part of our, yeah. all three of our shared purpose mm-hmm. is giving a voice mm-hmm. and letting people know that they matter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, that's why it hurts now thinking just, of just, it. Yeah. Just thinking yeah. About it. Sure. Yeah. Of course it does. Absolutely. So finding out what breaks your heart is a, is another breadcrumb. So mm-hmm. we give, you know, seven or 10 kind of prompts to help people. And then we give them like a, like a, a little manifesto structure so that they could begin, but it's not a one and done thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I'll, I'm happy to share my personal um, purpose with you, but it's, it, it evolves over time. And, and every time I say it, 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 it humbles me to say it because mm-hmm. a purpose is something that is so unique to you that it can never be taken away mm-hmm. from you. Mm-hmm. And so the sooner that you know your purpose, the sooner that you clarify it, the sooner that all the stuff that doesn't serve your purpose can fall away. Absolutely. You know what oh I mean? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So my purpose is um, to shine the light forward so others feel less alone, connected, elevated, and healed. I love yeah. that. Thank you. I love that. It's probably, yes. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if, you, your, if your purposes are probably very similar. Oh. So... But it's, it's, everybody has one, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and everybody should know because now yeah. if somebody asks me to do something that doesn't serve what I just said, I might still do it, but mm-hmm. I'm going to prior, I'm going to deprioritize yeah. it against where, your purpose, against my purpose, mm-hmm. anything that, that serves my purpose, yeah. Yeah. that's going to come first. Yeah. And then when you're doing the thing in purpose, whatever it is, time expands. Oh God. Because yeah. you're just in flow and you know, it's what so you're, just, you're just doing your <laughs> thing. It's so true. <laughs> time expands. That's I it. know. I think time honors it. I it's, think it, like you just it's get a rewarded fact. with capacity. It's a fact. It's yeah. so true. When you are in purpose, it's almost impossible to become overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you can. That be, is so true. It's so true. It, it, that it is excitement. Suddenly, suddenly, that suddenly is you're like, so suddenly true. you're like a jujitsu master. And you're like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So true. And then, and then the opposite is also true. Like anytime I've ever tried to make a decision based on what I thought was going to be worth a lot of money, or you know, took on a book that I didn't really relate to, but I thought it would be very commercial yeah. and have big value, yeah. then two things happen simultaneously. Everything's so hard. Everything yeah. takes so long. Everything has but what I call bugs in the blood. It's like everything <laughs> is just like, and this problem, and that problem, yeah. and this problem, and that problem. Yeah. And then the way my God works, the Old Testament God, comes down and smites me. It never ends up being worth any money anyway. <laughs> Anytime I ever try to do anything where the first motivation is money, bam, yeah, right upside yeah, down. Absolutely. Suddenly it costs me money. Yeah. <laughs> what? This has never happened in the whole history of time, but, the, but the, <laughs> I'm like, I'm smited. Yeah. I'm smited. Exactly. No, that is so true. It is so true. I think we, you know, I think That's like so you said, good. one thing that's so important, you know, we're in this pivot series and we're talking about all of this um, is us, each one of us being able to grant permission to ourselves and then to others to say, this is a permission that you're allowed. If you can see it and that. this event opens up the invitation to just take permission mm-hmm. to have that. And I want to know from you um, as a literary agent who now you're um, also managing events and conferences, was that a pivot for you or was that an extension? What I was consider that? it an evolution. Okay. I mean, I think it, I could imagine that people from the outside might see it as a pure pivot. Mm-hmm. It is a, it does pivot me, mm-hmm. but first of all, my book, my, my, my foot will always stay firmly in books and, and, and lectures because I believe it all starts with the, with the story. Mm-hmm. And so, but it, I've evolved in that. I don't want to just be part of being alone in a room with a book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to be part of a, of a community that supports each other, mm-hmm. you know, is there ride, ride or die mm-hmm. for each other mm-hmm. and helps people live their purpose driven life. Because I really believe in my heart of hearts that that's gonna, how, how we're going to heal the world, mm-hmm. connect, elevate, heal the yeah. world. When you said like people from outside, it probably looks like a total pivot. What do you mean? Well, I think suddenly the MC thing, remember I said I'm on the stage mm-hmm. now. I think a lot of people were like, oh, you always wanted to do that. You know, okay, now it's revealed, you know, all Uh these years you've been an agent, but really you've always wanted to be the one on the stage. Ah, interesting. And I'm like, okay, if that's what you want to believe, you know, then you can go ahead and believe that. And if I had always wanted to be on the stage, there's nothing wrong with that either. Yeah. But that's actually not how, how it's evolved for me. And 
to this day, if down the road I'm no longer needed as the MC, mm-hmm. then that's great too. I mean, again, right, right. when I leave, I want the townspeople to believe they saved themselves. Yeah. Right. So my role in this is not fixed. Yeah. I'm not attached yeah. to the outcome. Mm-hmm. I just, I'll just have lived my biggest purposeful driven life when everybody on this earth knows that they have a purpose, mm-hmm. they have a story, mm-hmm. and it matters. Yeah. And that we need each other in order to live our, our most purpose driven life. Mm-hmm. Oh, so good. I, I wish you guys could feel like <laughs> the vibration, <laughs> the, the passion. Oh. Honestly, like the, the, the motive behind this entire thing is nothing but pure passion. Thank you. And pure purpose. Which is what we felt the first time we met you. Yeah. Well, when you hear these stories and, you know, you hear people having crazy coincidences. You know, this one came alone Mm. but ended up, you know, finding a friend that she hadn't seen since summer camp. Mm -hmm. And now they're both single moms and they, you know, and they're going to share, you know, this childcare. And now because of that sharing childcare, they're able to go pursue their career dreams. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just can't believe the magic that happens that we can conjure together mm-hmm. when we yeah. just come together and when we, I think, take off our, what I call like our networking gladiator gear. Like, mm-hmm. you don't need to have a name tag. You don't need to be qualified. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to get, you know, you don't need to get something out of the relationship yeah. from me and me from you. Yeah. You can just come and share your issues, you know, your issues of body image or addiction or heartbreak or yeah. we all got them. Everybody has yes. the things. We yes. all have all the things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can also come and share your triumphs yeah. Yeah. and your things that you found peace with, yeah. even though you didn't necessarily end up where you thought you were going to yeah. end up, you know? And so okay. just to hold that space for, for just kind of wholehearted conversation about what it feels like to, to be alive. And, you know, um, I love, our, our community is women and primarily women, and I hope it will always be. But in the years to come, I hope people drag their boyfriends and their husbands mm. and their sons and their best friends because I believe this is a conversation that we all need to be having. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, and you have the courage to start it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's not easy. No. Yeah. I mean, I think that sometimes I just think to myself, 35,000 people, 10 cities. Like, mm-hmm. why can't you just do what normal people do? <laughs> because I mean, you're extraordinary. But, but quite honestly, <laughs> quite honestly, you could, right? Yeah. So Jennifer, like we told you guys, I mean, you should honestly just, I wish everyone could see your office. Maybe we'll have to do like a no, little a video slick. of it or something. But, <laughs> um, but like literally in the place where you are right now, you're in a place where people dream of. Like, literally, we're sitting on Madison Avenue mm-hmm. in New York City <laughs> in one of the swankiest offices mm-hmm. in New York City and one of the most beautiful offices yeah. in New York City. Mm-hmm. One of the leading, leading women. With the leading women She's in the literary woman. world yeah. who is doing what she loves, but then to say, but there's more. Well, there is more because the yeah. truth is every time I would get into those small rooms, where, you know, whether it be the Oval Office mm-hmm. or Fortune's Most Powerful Women or you know, all these amazing small rooms that I was in, I just had this incredible desire for everybody to be in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, the more, it's back to stories are better when they're shared. Yeah. The more I got access to these extraordinary people, the more I wanted everybody to have access to extraordinary people. Yeah. And I figured out that the two biggest barriers were time and money. Mm-hmm. So all the events that I were going to, that I was going to, were generally two days long, mm-hmm. and the price tag was generally in the hundreds, sometimes mm-hmm. even the thousands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I had this incredible dream of sort of democratizing the conference experience, mm-hmm. where if I could just make it one evening, and I could have tickets starting at twenty five dollars, so literally for the price of a movie, a slice of pizza, and yeah. a soda, mm-hmm. yeah. and about the same amount of time, yeah, you could. Begin to sow the seeds that would transform your life, your family, your community, and your world. Yeah. And then once I got that in my head, I was just, nothing could stop me. Wow. I love it. So ladies, hold on. you got to get a taste of this, right? So this tour kicks off September 18th. That's right. right. In Portland, Oregon. Which is going to be so fun at the Keller Auditorium. I mean, the places they're going. So well, you see, okay, so they've got Portland, Seattle, Washington. San Jose, Texas. San Jose, That's California. California. I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> California, Phoenix, Arizona, Austin, Texas, Washington, D.C., 
Nashville, Tennessee. So all our Memphis girls, please yes. get your get butt Nashville in the car. Get your butt in the car and road trip. Minneapolis, Chicago, Philly. I mean, you guys are covering a lot we of are. Yeah. And I'll tell you, we actually chose. People are like, "Why are you not coming back to New York? Why not LA?" Because we really want to get our message everywhere, and yeah. we want to go to places like Phoenix and Minneapolis that maybe don't get people talking yeah. about this stuff all the time. I mean, we're pretty lucky. We live, you know, yeah, on the, the coast, of, in the yeah. center of these metropolitan places mm-hmm. where there are places you can go and talk mm-hmm. about the sort of things that we're talking mm-hmm. about. But we really, we wanted to spread the, the light as far and wide as possible. So that's why we picked some of the places that we picked. And, yeah. and it's really working out. In Minneapolis, I mean, we're almost sold out already. It's, I think, a three or 4,000 person theater. Wow. Wow. Yeah, we sold 10,000 tickets in the first four days that we went around. Oh my sale. goodness. Yeah. Bananas. Congratulations. Okay. I mean, it's got to be sold just, out. Yeah, absolutely. Please, be sold out. You guys have to all come. I mean, I think that the, I think that it really is proof that people are longing for connection and yeah. impact yeah. and meaning more than ever. And, yeah. and so, at, as I said earlier, all of our events, we have three core speakers, um, Glennon Doyle, Abby Wambach, and Lovey Ajayi. And then we have people joining us along the road. So on our website, which is togetherlive.com, you'll see all the amazing people that are joining us. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have Sophia Bush and Connie Britton and Alexis Jones and Dr. Kenoki Ford and Jen Hatmaker and Latham Thomas and Iftahaj Muhammad and Elizabeth Lesser and on and on and on and on and on. I mean, just come and have your mind blown. So, so, yeah. like, so this is so coincidental, by the way. So Latham was on our last podcast yes, absolutely. talking about owning your glow, and she's actually going to be on the tour. So yeah, you guys right, have yeah. already heard her. Oh, and she's Met amazing. Latham, you warmed up she's going to gonna actually be on eight stops, so you have wow. a very good chance of seeing wow. Latham. That's she's so extraordinary. Good. And she's really going to be helping people um, get inside their bodies, like to just kind of connect the yeah. breath to the body yeah. and then and then connect to the people around you because you know how it is. You accidentally bump into somebody. You're like, oh, sorry, I touched you. It's, yeah. We're so yeah. afraid of just like touching someone by mistake. I mean, yeah. we've gotten to such a weird place where it's uh-huh. like, you know, you get... You just meanwhile, yeah. me and Sybil want to sit on Jennifer's lap. <laughs> no, <laughs> no problem. No problem. I'm happy to sit in a giant puppy pie. No, this is so good. Just for me, give... One thing, Jennifer, that, you know, our girlfriends can always know is true. When you don't know, what do you do? When you don't know what to do, what do you do? Well, the first thing is I do nothing. Okay. Okay. And I think that's very interesting. I love that you asked me that very question because I grew up with a mother, single mom, three kids. My, my mom had no parents. And so she was always, and I love her more than anything in the world, but she was always like had this compulsion to act instantly. Like it was, everything was always an emergency. Like we just have to act right now or else, you know, the, the threat was or else we're going to lose everything kind of thing, you know, and money was tight. And so we just always had to just, just act. Mm-hmm. And when I got a little older, I began to realize that you always have choices mm-hmm. and not just financial choices because, mm-hmm. you know, money comes and goes. But whenever I feel like I don't know what to do, I do nothing. Mm-hmm. That's good. And I breathe, and I breathe, and I try to find my little voice. I get curious. Why am I scared? Why am I triggered? What's the mm-hmm. what's the problem? Mm-hmm. And once I sort of get curious and start figuring out what's happening here, then I won't act until I can see at least two choices. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I never do either or. It's always and, but, and, two. We can do this, mm-hmm. and we can do this, too. I never give myself that sort of either or. Mm-hmm. And it really helps me realize there's always an infinite amount of, of opportunities and options if you're willing to just take a minute mm-hmm. and absorb what you're feeling. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times you're just feeling triggered because somebody disrespected you or someone talked to, talked to you like you were mm-hmm. stupid or somebody didn't get how accomplished mm-hmm. you were mm-hmm. or somebody was checking out your husband or some. Mm-hmm. A lot of times the, the thing that's making you feel like you have to act in the moment is just hurt feelings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, so good. and yeah. once you can identify that, yeah. you just realize, oh, okay, I'm triggered. I don't need to actually fight back. I don't need to send that email right now. I don't need to go into that person's office and say, why didn't you have me in that meeting? I don't need, yeah. to, I don't need to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I can just get still until I, until I can see at least two options for yeah. myself. So and then from there, hopefully I'll make the, you know, the writer of the two choices. But if I don't, guess what? Next right decision. Next I right love decision. it. Next yeah. right decision. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I think that's so, uh, for, for most of our girlfriends who um, 
are in a pivot or even want to or see themselves evolving in some kind of way, they don't know what or how, and they start to feel like they're paralyzed. I totally you know, get and, that. Yeah. So I want to say to that, back to the either or, get out of the the the, the either or way of thinking. You know, mm-hmm. in other words, it's not all or nothing. Yeah. You're in love with your side hustle, but you got to keep your regular job. Mm-hmm. Good. Both of those things are true, and both of those things are good. Yeah. And neither of those things are permanent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that last right? part. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Uh-huh. So, you know, I like to always... Something I say to my to to one of my children is, what what happens if you just go where the doors are swinging open for a minute? Let's just play a game where, mm-hmm. you know, you go where the doors are swinging open. Because if you guys are like me, it's a natural impulse to want to bang on the doors that are closing and <laughs> closing, and just completely ignore the doors that are swinging open left and right. <laughs> right? Yes. yes. What is that yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. So you just play a little game with yourself, and you just say, well. What's going easy? Yeah. What's good? If I went with the flow, where would I go? Yeah. And the, and the funny thing is that when I go with the flow, everything's going my mm-hmm. way. It's automatic. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's so funny. It, it takes me right to the waves in the ocean. But that, it's you know, all, I think about the, the wave, I think about the waves in the ocean all <laughs> yeah, the time because yeah. the waves are not separate from the ocean. Mm-hmm. They're just part of the mm-hmm. ocean, right? So sometimes the ocean is really flat and still, mm-hmm. and sometimes there's big mm-hmm. waves, but it's all the same thing. Yeah. It's all the ocean. Yeah. And that's true of, of the hard times or the yeah. crises or the times in our life where we feel, you know, confusion or overwhelmed. To me, confusion, overwhelmed, and anger mm-hmm. are all signs to, for me in my life that I'm off my purpose path. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then that's when you get curious, you know, mm-hmm. what's going on here? Mm-hmm. What, what, what's driving me? And when you get down to that, what you're going to find in most cases is fear. Fear yeah. is what's driving you. Yeah. And all probably very legitimate reasons. Fear you're not going to be able to take care of your kids. Mm-hmm. Fear, you know, you're not going to hold your relationship together. Fear mm-hmm. you're going to lose your job. But it's very difficult to get to a place of peace and power from a fearful stance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so true. I'm going to pack you up, Jennifer, <laughs> and take you home with me and just let you teach my kids. <laughs> okay. Definitely don't want me to teach your kids. I let my, I let my, when the day my kids turn 10, I say, okay, now here are the curse words. You don't use them in front of parents, <laughs> but you need, to have, you need to, have, you know how to use them so you don't want you your kids pocket. around me. Get all your combinations going. <laughs> Get your combinations going. I love it. Uh, Jennifer, thank you. Oh, you guys, I absolutely adore you, and I adore oh the gosh. light you're shining in the world. Oh, thank you I absolutely so adore you. So I, I can't wait to see you guys on the road, yes. and I can't wait to see all of your all of your amazing tribe on the road. Again, yes. please go visit us at togetherlive.com. Buy tickets. Come see us. I promise you we will rock your world. Yes. Do you guys have an Instagram too, right? Yes, we do. It's, and it is? Is it Together Live? I think it's Together Live Events. The live Events. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. And make sure you download the app. I mean, I think it's so important that oh we have God. resources that are available and that we use them. Totally. And they're on demand. And I love the fact, and even the fact that the app is celebrating members of the tribe and, and the network. And so there's different people being highlighted for what they do and how they're serving their purpose. I love that. I love it. And we also have this amazing partnership this year uh, with Mm Ancestry.com. And we do that because if Ancestry asks the question, who are you really? Mm -hmm. Then the Together Tour asks, why are you here? And now what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. So it'll be great at the events because we'll really be exploring where do you really come from? And Mm -hmm. what does your ancestry say about how we're all more the same than we are different? So so it's going to be absolutely amazing. And people are going to be able to learn about where they come from. They're going to learn their purpose. And then they'll connect to a community that helps them go over the bridge of bravery into action. Every time I see one of those commercials, I'm like, I know. I need to get that done. All right. Well, you'll do it it at our tour. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Because you know what? We are really our ancestors' ancestors' wildest dreams come true. Oh, my. Seriously. 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 We are. We are. We are. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We could keep you on love. here forever. I know. I know. <laughs> we would totally monopolize the rest of your day because every time it's just soul food. Thank it's you. Just, it's love really it. good soul just food. Just love it so much. And I'm so excited that you're now on the front end with grace and ease oh, and thrill. Thank you. Yeah. thank you. You'll get your makeup artist earlier. Yeah, this, this time. time. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> no spinach in the teeth this time. <laughs> I'll never be as glamorous as these two boys. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Well, we always close by thanking our husbands and, and friends and family and so forth. So anyway, I want to thank Kwaku, who's my husband I love dearly. And I want to thank Rich Daniel, who I love dearly. And I'll thank Patrick Edward Walsh, my 
beautiful husband and boyfriend of 32 years. I love <laughs> it. Yes. And my kids are Sam and Dylan. Thank you so much for being patient with mommy. <laughs> yes. Thank you for Miss Sky. And for Griffin, Hadley, and Wyatt. Oh, your kids are so cute, so by the way. They really, really are. Thank and great girlfriends, thank all of you for trusting us as your go-to source for everything life, love, and laughter. Make sure you listen every Wednesday on iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast Republic, Podcast Bean, Blueberry, and Spotify. And Spotify. And wow. Spotify. Yes. Tell yes. us. Oh, my gosh. And please check us out on our social and our Twitter. The underscore great GFS. Instagram. The Great Girlfriends. Facebook. The Great Girlfriends. And please be sure to join our Facebook group. There are thousands and thousands of women there who are looking to connect with other women. And so we want you guys there. Yes. Make sure you post your questions online. You share with your friends. Keep, keep listening, listening and, and keep, keep being, being a, a great, great girlfriend. girlfriend. I'm Sybil. I'm Brandis. I'm Jennifer. And we're signing off. Peace. Peace.